Okay, um, the representative from the team can share their screen um, whenever you're ready and in a minute we'll begin. Great, uh, the floor is all yours. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Shreya. And I'm Raymond, and we are team number 23 presenting to you our new venture, Sage Snacks, a product that seeks to bring nutrition to elderly populations in a socially engaging, unique way. So let's dive right in and find a wise way to health with Sage Snacks. The unfortunate truth today is that the elderly just aren't eating. Calorie consumption decreases significantly with age by as much as 1,200 daily calories for seven-year-old men. However, basic nutritional needs do not decrease with age. In fact, some nutrients are needed even more. But this decreased calorie consumption has led to major proportions of the elderly being malnourished or at risk for being so. Malnutrition among the elderly is often due to inadequate food intake, food choices that lead to dietary deficiencies, illness that can cause nutritional loss, or the level of dependence of the elderly individual. Elder malnutrition is a deadly phenomenon, an epidemic hiding in plain sight. It is estimated that almost 50% of older Americans are malnourished. This prolonged weight loss increases elders' risk of needing healthcare services, as well as their likelihood of premature entrance into nursing homes and even death. This problem also impacts many more than just the elderly. Elder malnutrition comes at substantial cost to the economy through added burden on healthcare pro programs. Conversely, remaining well-nourished has been proven to improve mental elders' mental health, physical health, and quality of life immensely. Proper nutrition can also augment elders' health outcomes when faced with age-related diseases like cancer. Beyond decreasing mortality and addressing the mounting costs of healthcare for an ever-growing number of elderly, we believe that nutrition, even as a supplement to ongoing treatment, plays an essential role in improving patient conditions. For example, mitigating the symptoms of hypertension has been linked to adequate regulation of potassium, sodium, and calcium intake. Similarly, increasing consumption of dietary fiber has been associated with decreased risk of fatal ischemic heart disease, and rheumatoid arthritis symptoms can be lessened through nutrition regulation. Evidently, the benefits of proper nutrition extend to many of these specific conditions, primarily affecting older individuals, which makes the need to address geriatric malnutrition all the more pressing. Additionally, there, there are a multitude of reliable tests out there that can be used to assess malnutrition and potential malnutrition among the elderly. Although we don't plan on using these tests directly as we're not a medical service, we'd like to incorporate some of these sorts of questions into potential surveys we would send to our customers to assess the efficacy of our product and helping the elderly population achieve better nutrition. In crafting our product, we considered all facets of this problem. Firstly, social impediments are associated with malnutrition. When elders eat in groups, they tend to eat more food. This is logical from eating in school cafeteria lunchrooms to grabbing a bite with your coworkers. Eating is a social activity for most of our lives. Secondly, existing approaches to combating malnutrition, such as feeding tubes and force feeding, often remove elders' autonomy. Finally, certain foods can react adversely with common medications for the elderly. For instance, grapefruit juice can lessen the effectiveness of anti-seizure me medications and impotence drugs. With those considerations, the essential problem, and the challenges unique to our consumer population in mind, we've thought of a solution, the Sage Snacks Monthly Snack Subscription Box. At first, we wanted to do something more like weekly shipments, but the shipments every week would likely be too costly for most consumers and for us, so we switched to monthly shipments. By giving our members a large selection of snacks each month, they can try out a wide variety to see what they like. The sense of autonomy may also help decrease malnutrition risk, as indicated previously. We also plan to include an informational card list listing each snack we've carefully selected for their box and the important nutrients these snacks are giving them. We'll tell them the main important nutrients they're getting and how these nutrients help their body, which will also help inform and empower our customers to be more aware of their own nutrition, further expanding their sense of autonomy. You may also be wondering, why did we choose snacks and not meals? Among the elderly, snacking is actually an important dietary behavior because it helps them consume an adequate amount of calories and quantity of nutrients throughout the day. Additionally, many elderly individuals are unable to consume the entire portion of meals they're served, which causes a diminished intake of nutrients and food waste. 
We can instead supplement meals with nutritious snacks that they are more likely to finish considering the smaller portion size. We also recognize that shipping things can have a big impact on the environment. While we still believe in the advantages of directly delivering our service, especially for elderly consumers that may face more difficulty going out and purchasing their own food, we want to make sure that we're being as sustainable as possible. We'll be using recyclable cardboard shipping boxes, and as our business grows, we can look into sourcing even more environmentally friendly packaging. And in our quest to help the elderly eat more and eat regularly, we also want to make eating enjoyable for them again. To do this, we also plan on hosting moderated monthly group meals so that members can eat together and alleviate some of the loneliness that some elders feel while eating. During these group meals, elders will be able to meet others with similar dietary needs and life experiences in order to help build a support network, which we hope will extend outside of just eating together. We also hope to create groups specifically for different languages, such as Mandarin or Spanish, so that members can more comfortably communicate in their native language if they wish. We hope that hosting these meetings will encourage our members to eat more and get into the habit of eating more regularly. As the frequency of these meetings increases, we want to help them. We want these meetings to help hold our members accountable and remind them to eat by helping them eat together. Navigating the ever-evolving world of technology can be overwhelming and difficult for many elderly individuals out there. I honestly don't blame them, even I have trouble sometimes. To promote autonomy for our members, our website will prioritize simple, self-explanatory UI, large texts and buttons with clearly labeled purposes. We'll also keep everything centered on our homepage so users can easily navigate to any part of the website without too many clicks or interactions, hopefully making the process less overwhelming. We'll also ask customers to rate the snacks in the box we send them, using artificial intelligence algorithms to consistently find them the snacks they enjoy. Additionally, our AI will also consider self-reported factors like sex, weight, and special conditions to ensure that snack selections improve health, as well as the current stock of items and average price of each included snack. Oftentimes, subscription services can be difficult to cancel, which would be especially predatory towards elderly individuals who may already struggle to navigate websites. We are committed to full transparency with a straightforward process for canceling subscriptions and regular emails to our members to update them on payment details. Finally, since we'll be handling sensitive and personal information like medication and health history, we'll make sure to keep our website as secure as possible so our members' data can't be used against them. And now for the most important part of our proposal, the snacks. Let's talk about some of the products we're aiming to have in each of our monthly Sage snack boxes. From a selection including nut and seed packs, soft breads, fruit-based snacks, yogurts, jerkies, and much more, we'll tailor our packages to the nutritional needs of each of our customers. To choose some starting snacks, we performed a retrospective analysis of our competitors' products to assess the best approach to finding affordable options for our customers. Additionally, we kept the needs of our target market in mind when selecting these snacks. For example, to account for dysphagia, we replaced most chips with puffs, which dissolve more easily. To supplement protein needs, we also found some tuna snacks, which offered an easy to swallow flavorful treat. Spending $15 to fill each Sage Snacks box, we'd have a little under $2 to spend on each snack, which is very feasible considering our choices in this process. All right, but how are we gonna get these snacks? One major way we like to try and get our costs down for the snacks that we provide is by partnering directly with snack companies. To do this, we'll reach out to a wide variety of snack brands through calls and emails. By reaching out to the brands, we'll be able to establish a line of contact to negotiate directly. This takes us to our next step. In order to negotiate with these snack companies and achieve distributor pricing, we'll promote our own brand with three selling points. Our first selling point is that through our snack box, we provide these snack companies with an easy way for them to be discovered by a wide audience without any extra marketing on their part. Through this process of discovery, we also provide snack companies with access to a niche market, namely the elderly population, a market that they may not otherwise be able to reach as easily. Additionally, we will regularly need to replenish our stocks of snacks as we are a subscription-based service, and that provides these companies with a regular customer as well. We'll also make sure we're able to pay our vendors through a variety of means to maximize our flexibility and help facilitate a deal. Since the costs of shipping will be incorporated into our box price, we plan to base our operations in Nebraska. The cheapest shipping option, USPS Cubic Shipping, prices based on zones. So starting with a central location and opening additional warehouses based on where we have the most subscribers will be the most cost-effective solution. 
We'll be packing boxes ourselves for the start, expanding to pay more employees as we can. However, shipping is only half the battle. We also need to make sure our, cus our customers are satisfied with their boxes. Therefore, in packaging, we'll keep in mind these three questions. Does the box feel full? Does it look worth it? And does it have variety? Some of these factors, such as fullness and variety, will be considered by our AI through uh, calculating snack weight and type. They will also be augmented by our branded packaging, decorated both on the inside and outside of the box. To start getting into some of the numbers involved in our venture, we'll address the major upfront costs for establishing ourselves. We expect to spend approximately $20,000 on developing the secure software used to match customers with nutritional snacks that fit their needs. We also plan to spend around $1,000 to consult with a dietitian on some of the best practices for our first Sage snack boxes, and around $300 per month on renting a warehouse in Nebraska to store our products and ship across the country. For the last major initial cost, we will likely spend around $10,000 on the design of the website to ensure accessibility and utility for elderly customers. These numbers are approximate and may adjust as we progress in the development of this venture. And here's just a breakdown of our pricing and variable costs. We're estimating a cost of about $15 worth of snacks per box if we provide eight to 10 nutritional snacks. We're also estimating a maximum of about $9 for shipping, which varies as zones that are closer are cheaper to ship to. We're also estimating a cost of about $1.50 per shipping box if we order them in mass quantities. So overall, we're planning on charging $30 per box, which would also help cover the maximum amount of shipping costs. With this price and our costs, we will make a minimum of $4.49 per box depending on shipping prices, which is a profit margin of about 15%. We calculated that at least 550,000 boxes would be sold by looking at the percentage of elderly people in the U.S. with subscription boxes and dividing that number by two for modesty. This results in a revenue of $2,469,500. Subtracting the costs that we detailed in our last slide, we'll make $2,317,700 over three years. As a new business, we'd likely use a portion of this profit to fund marketing. Through marketing, we'd aim to include the elderly who aren't already familiar with subscription box services, as well as partner with nursing homes. Even if we spend 20% of our profits on marketing, we'll still profit $1,854,160. Beyond where Sage Snacks will be in the near future, we also know that we should be aiming to expand given our unique position in the subscription snack market landscape. Recent events have laid the groundwork for our entrance into the industry. The COVID-19 pandemic has produced a sharp rise in the demand for subscription boxes since they offer consistent and accessible services during a remote time. Moreover, it has normalized remote meeting and interaction, especially for the elderly. This opportunity allows us to connect elderly customers across the country based on their snacking preferences and facilitate social eating on a larger scale than ever possible before. So what are some of the ways that elders are getting their nutrition these days? Currently, one major way that elderly individuals are often fed to ensure nutrition is through feeding tubes. However, these tubes are incredibly invasive, stressful, and dehumanizing. Although they may be necessary for some, many elderly individuals with feeding tubes do not actually need them as they should only be used as a last resort. Sage Snacks is an empowering alternative for those who do not actually need feeding tubes as they can still feed themselves but are simply lacking adequate nutrition. No snack box on the market currently targets elderly consumers' nutritional needs. There are certainly boxes which account for healthy diets such as earth box and graze. However, these boxes fail to account for concerns unique to elders like dysphagia, medication interfering ingredients, and social eating, like Sage Snacks does. Other boxes like Golden Comfort Crate account for elder needs but are more entertainment centric. Instead of snacks, they may include puzzles or other games. When they do contain food, it's often unhealthy treats. Overall, Sage Snacks is the best solution for elderly seeking to improve their nutritional habits in a non-invasive, fun way. Thank you for your time and attention. The next few slides are just our citations and we hope you enjoyed hearing about Sage Snacks, a wise way to help.
Awesome. Um, we'll, I'll take some, we'll have some time for questions now, if anyone has any. Yeah, thank you so much for the great presentation. Again, I really like the innovative concept of subscription snacks for seniors and also the thoughtfulness you have put into thinking about the different aspects of senior nutrition, about the social aspects and the conflicts that would be in terms of their medications and nutrition. So I think it's very interesting and, and, and very cool. Uh, one of the questions I had is, which you alluded to slightly, is around given that you're going direct to seniors, how do you plan to again market to seniors in a targeted way, as you mentioned, like nursing homes is certainly one way to do it, but to reach the target market at the rate that you described, I think you need more aggressive marketing tactics. Um, so I am curious to hear that, especially I'm also unclear which specific segment of the senior population you're going after. Yeah, of course. Um, there's definitely some strategies that we're considering in terms of marketing to seniors. First and foremost, uh, definitely avoiding assuming that other people are going to be making their buying decisions and trying to, you know, respect their autonomy and market specifically to them with relatable language and specifically multi-channel marketing. So using um, things that seniors already, um, you know, prefer using such as catalogs or uh, websites that they may visit more frequently or magazines that they may read more often than the average individual. Um, we'd also like to par partner with some of the boxes that we mentioned earlier, such as Golden Comfort Crate that seniors may already be buying to um, sort of market our product in their product, if that makes sense. Um, because, you know, our jurisdictions don't overlap in that they are entertainment subscription box crates and we are nutritional subscription box crates, that partnership could provide a really effective channel in terms of making sure that seniors are both, um, you know, adequately fed and adequately entertained. Got it. And, and sorry, one additional question is, you mentioned you're customizing the snacks to senior needs. Like, are you also getting their information on, say, medications and disease conditions in some way. Sorry if I missed it in your presentation, but I wasn't clear on that. Yeah, so we're thinking of having a, a self-reported aspect on our website. Um, so when we're customizing our boxes, we wanna make sure we know what medications they have so we don't give them anything that might interfere with that because that would be the total opposite of what we want to do. Um, and same thing with health conditions because some health conditions we know specifically increase intake of specific nutrients can really help the condition without any additional medication. So we wanna make sure we know these things so we can customize the boxes. Um, we think that this would be just a self-reported thing um, because we're not specifically a medical uh, service, but as part of this, we are really committed to making sure all of our members' data is protected because we know how sensitive medical information can be and how that can be weaponized against individuals. Um, so we do want them to self-report this, but we also do our best to make sure this data is never shared with anyone else. Thank you. Yeah, I was also thinking about the marketing. Um, I know senior autonomy is very important, but the seniors that live in the community, I think a, um, an interesting thought would be to go after their um, caregivers or even like remote family members because oftentimes people don't know what they can do for their seniors and this would be you know a huge relief to them if they knew that their our loved one was eating well so I think beyond I mean in a nursing home it's one thing but they, their meals are tend to be very you know there's a dietitian there and they, they tend to be more provided I think the senior at home this is a wonderful wonderful um, idea for them I really and I loved your presentation um, yeah, I, I was just wanted to hear a little bit more about the focus, the uh, chat groups or focus groups that you were talking about. Um, I, I'm also a little concerned about, you know, HIPAA and, and privacy informations, but I like that idea, but I'm not quite sure how you would, besides language or, or something, how you would curate a group like that. I think one thing we really do want to focus on is that language aspect, because I know, especially for a lot of people in elderly populations, like even my own grandparents, their English isn't very good, um, but they still, that doesn't mean that they don't need to communicate with others and kind of build the support network. Um, 
But part of what we wanted to do is not necessarily disclose to other individuals specific health conditions or medications, but just sort of group people together based on what kind of snacks they're receiving. So they can kind of talk about maybe like, are you enjoying these snacks? They can talk with each other about maybe like tips for how to eat things better or other just things generally, because yeah, we don't want people to just be disclosing their information. Um, that's why we'll also make sure there's a moderator in these chats just to make sure that, you know, we always know what's going on just so in case anything happens, we have someone there who can, um, who can help facilitate the situation. Yeah, I like that you're focusing on that social isolation part. Thank you. Hi, that was great. Um, it's a really, it's a great idea. And I just, I really appreciate your attention to um, transparency and to kind of the avoiding falling into that trap of um, the kind of predator emails and, and uh, the, that you provide that really clear way for people to stop the subscription at any time. Um, so yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that all of that was included so explicitly. Yeah, and I don't have any specific questions, but I did just want to commend the team. The presentation was extremely well done. And, uh, you know, all of you are very uh, articulate and uh, understand, uh, um, you know, all the particular uh, items that go into the presentation and the knowledge around it. So I just wanted to thank you. Um, um, we do have a few more minutes, so if any other questions come up, um, let me know. Otherwise, um, thank you so much, Team 23. That was a really great presentation. Um, you guys can stick around for a few more minutes just in case any other questions come up. Um, but other than that, I will let you go at around 1025. Um, and yeah, that was really great. Thank you. Thank you so much for you guys' feedback and questions, too. Yeah.